Hello guys, I'm back. My name is Jefferson Costa. I'm a chemical process engineer with expertise in plant design. And today I will talk to you about the biomethane production and I will do a short overview about this process. And uh, unfortunately, I will not be able to be live with you today because this weekend is my wife's birthday. And in fact, it, it was on Friday, but we are in some vacation. But to keep my commitment with you to bring a new live session every Saturday, I'm, I'm letting this recording video to you. So I don't have too much time be because I need to, to join a meeting in some minutes. So let's proceed with our presentation. To do that, let me be a little bit smaller. And eventually you will see me taking a look at the site. It is because my screen is at my left side. So today I will share with you a presentation that I prepared for new employees in my company, uh, in the company that I am a chemical process engineer and also a efficiency engineer. And my boss asked for some kind of training or an overview of the, the business of the company. And one of, and one of those business is the biomethane production. So I will, I don't have the plan to get deeper in, in the process in itself, but to give you an overview as if you were an employee of this company. So the objective of this presentation is to share with new employees a brief explanation about the biomethane process production. And why this is important? It is important because this way the new employees will understand better the, the business of the company and also they will get familiar with the production process, the safeties, the hazards and what kind of care should be taken in order to go through the, the industrial area and etc. And of course that is very nice when someone asked us where we work and we can, we can talk more about that, what kind of products we do and how important is our activities in this company. So everything in the biomethane process and in here we are talking about the, the production of biomethane from landfill. It starts with the raw material. And the raw material in this case, it, it's come from the landfill. But when we talking about the landfill, it's not some, uh, any kind of landfill. And let me share with you uh, a picture. When I talking to you about the landfill, I'm not talking about the amount of trash that is, is put in together in some places, in some cities, in a unorganized un un way. This is not the type of landfill that we use to produce the, the biomethane or the biogas that will supply the biomethane plant. When I talking about the landfill, I'm talking about this kind of project. So you can see that it is very, very organized. There are many engineering, uh, there are many engineering associated with a project like this. We have uh, pipelines for, for draining. We have pipelines for leach age, uh, transfer, we have pipelines for the capture of the biogas. Another so with it we are we are able to get the the gas from the landfill in a controlled way and it is very important when you are starting doing 
uh, a plant design that we know the characteristics of our raw material. So in this way, let me share with you the... This is a, a typical composition of the, the bio, biogas and we have around 50 to 80 percent of methane and it will be our product at the end of the process and do you do you already know that the methane is a source of energy and it can be used to many processes for instance to production of hydrogen and etc but we have some other components in this stream and the main the main contaminant or the main impurity of a bio biogas is the carbon dioxide it can represent from 25 to 50 percent of the oil stream and we need to remove that from our process in order to be able to sell the biomethane as a valuable product but we have some other small contaminants and it depends on how is the design of the landfill and it depends also the type of uh, trash that is sent to the landfill so we can have nitrogen we can have oxygen and when the microorganisms is doing the the reactions of the the trash what happens is that we need uh, an environment free of oxygen in that way the microorganisms will produce methane and CO2 but we have some permeability to, to, from the, the environment to the underground or, or to the, the environment of the landfill and because of that and depending on the, the, how is, is, the, is, the, is the structure of the as the, the trash is put in the landfill we can have the contaminants as nitrogen and also oxygen and in, in some process, bio, bio, biological process, we have also the production of nitrogen or denitrification of the, 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 the denitrification of the carbon material. And in some, we have siloxanes, and siloxanes is a uh, uh, a contaminant that we must remove from our process although it can be traced but it is very important because when it is subjected to to high high temperatures it can form a, a kind of silica or a kind of uh, sand and that can damage the the equipment and we can have hydrogen ammonia and depending on the, the origin of the, the trash, we can have H2S. And that depends, uh, varies a lot from landfill to, to landfill. I have two, two biomethane plants under my, my, not my supervision, but that we are working to in the company. And one of them has a, a lot of content of HOS and the other one don't, don't have too much. So once we know the characteristics of the raw material, we can start thinking what are the available technologies that we can use to produce the biomethane that is our final pro product. That said, That said, we need to take the gas from the landfill. And the gas from the landfill, we use uh, blowers, uh, equipment, and blower is a, a type of compressor, but where the pressure, pressure, differential pressure between the suction and, the, pre, and the, the discharge pressure is very smaller considering, uh, comparing to a uh, standard compressor. So a booster usually increases the pressure from 0.2 to up to 1 bar 
of differential pressure. So they are equipment simpler than, than compressors, but they are very important because, as you have seen, the biogas is produced in the land field, and what happens is that it is produced at around the atmospheric pressure. So to transport the bio, biogas from the landfill to our plant, we need to install, install a blower at the, the battery limit of our, our industrial plant in order that applying a negative pressure in the pipeline, we are able to, to deliver or to feed our production. And the blower, let me share with you, this is uh, a blower, and in this case, it's not a blower for the land field, or this, this configuration is not for land field use. It is an air blower, and you can see that it ha has a case in here and a filter. So, in this case, in this particular case, the air is taken from the environment, and, the, and it enters the filter and goes to the blower. The blower builds the pressure and it can have many stages, but as the differential pressure is very little, there is no need for cooling or intercooling. So the gas enters here and, get, and the gas goes out here. And so in, in biomethane plants, most, pro, most probably you will find this kind of equipment. And of course, if we are talking about reliability, we eventually uh, probably will have more than one because if one, one, one equipment of these brakes to not stop the operation for too long, we need to have another one to start up. And this is uh, very common when we are talking about rotating equipment because they are, they are, they can have some kind of uh, issue and to do the maintenance, to, to fix something, we need to have more than one in parallel. So we, we do the boosting of the, the, the biogas just enough to be able to reach the compressor that we have in the system. But before sending the, the biogas to the compressor, we need to do, in many cases, or in some cases, a uh, kind of pretreatment. And the first one is that when we do the, the, we use the blower to increase the pressure, although we don't use, it, we don't use intercoolers in the, in the equipment, it increases the, the temperature of the, the biogas. And to, to do the removal or to feed this gas to another system, we need to cool down that because if we are talking about uh, feeding gas to a compressor, if the, pressure, if the temperature is lower, the compressor will have a better efficiency. And if you are talking about removing HOS in a... Uh, Bio, biological uh, process, we need to control the temperature that it ends the, the process. So because of that, we have uh, some kind of cooling and it can be a direct after cooler or it can be some kind of heat exchanger and no problem. But the important is that we need to do a cooling of this biogas in order to to send to the other part of the process. And depending on the amount of the HOS, we need to do the removal of the HOS. And there are many ways to do that. Let me show you. For instance, we can use a vessel with a, a dissolvent. And in this kind of process, we we will be removing the HOS and time to time, periodically, we need to change the, the, the content of the vessel and buy new, in, in, for instance, in this case, sulfur trap and replace that. And in order to not stop the production, again, we may consider 
a second vessel in parallel because while we are unfilling and filling again one vessel we can keep the operation with the other one so this is a, a kind of system to remove the HOS from our system but there are others including biological way let me let me show you so if we are talking about a biological process uh, what happens is that we have the raw gas and this is the in our case the biogas it enters a observer and the, in the top of the observer the HOS is was removed and the the liquid phase will be rich with HOS and goes to a reactor where the microorganisms is responsible to reducing or to oxidizing the HOS to 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 sulfur uh, to sulfur compound to sulfur slurry and we remove the the sulfur the elemental sulfur from the process and we have we need air blowers we need to have pumps to do the uh, recirculation there are the control of the the pH of the the process and the temperature because all of this can impact the microorganism performance in many cases this uh, it is a, a very complex process and in many cases we buy this or uh, this type of solution from a third party will not will will see during your career that we are will not design everything at a plant in some cases we need to get the technology from a specific supplier or from some kinds of a specific supplier to add to our process and the micro the the removal of sulfur using microorganisms is one of them if you don't work in this kind of company probably you will not be involved with this kind of design but we need to understand how it works in order that we can do the specification and we can evaluate the, the quotation or the proposal of the suppliers are offering us and once the, the biogas is pretreated we send that to the compressor and we need to send that to the compressor because the the process of removing the co2 usually is done in high pressure and here we depending on the process we can build up the pressure from the 0 0.5 bar g to 10 14 bar 14 bar g or we can increase that to around 30 bar g depending on the type of technology that we use to do the treatment or to do the sweetening of the co2 and to do the removal of the CO2 from the biogas, there are many kinds of processes also, as we have in the dehydration. And one of them is the sweetening with solvent. So this is very similar with dehydration. We are using TAG. So we have the, the raw gas here, and in this, our case is the biogas. It goes to a absorber tower, and at the top, it is it depending on the kind of the process. It can have two steps or one step, but in, at the outlet of the absorber, we have the purified gas, and the solvent is recovered, and we have heating, exchanging uh, interfaces or or. or uh, each exchange, uh, exchanging integration and it goes to a lower uh, lower uh, lower pressure process where the, the impurities and the CO2 is released from the solvent and we can go go back with the solvents to the process and with that we have 
the uh, a semi closed loop although we we have some losses it is uh, uh, minimal losses we have the at the the top of the the stripper column we have the co2 and so other contaminants that was observed and the solvent usually also observe a small part of the the hydrocarbon in this case is the methane so in, in more in more complex or in more elaborated process we can have the uh, a flash tank and in the flash tank we release the the hydrocarbon material and we can recirculate and i will show you if we have enough time i will show you uh how it looks like in uh, process simulations uh, software like Icepan High Seas. So once we pass the biogas through the, the CO2 purification or when we do the sweetening, we have our biomethane. And the biomethane is our product and we need to do uh, quality measurement or quality verification and of course that the specification of our product depends on the contract with the customer depends on the regulation of the industry in your in your country and in brazil we have the anp resolution that regulates that it is the 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 number 685 from 2017 but i have here to share with you a example of how is the specification it is not taken from the e anp but it's very very similar if you go there and it is in portuguese so that's why i'm not sharing with you so we get the biogas with around 50 to 80 percent of methane and we need to increase the the purity at a minimum of 90 percent of methane and that's the minimum because if i don't reach that i am not able to sell this gas as biogas and of course as i increase the percentage of methane in my gas i increase the heat heat power uh heat value of of it and i can i can gain i can get more money with that booking in because in many contracts the the fees or the bill are based on the calorific heat value of the the gas so as much by uh, as much methane i have in my gas it's better but i must concern about the the inerts and the contaminants so each standard and each region will have this kind of a requirement in order that we can sell the gas as product and once i have my product okay i have the quality and i have the specification get uh, got I need to deliver these products to the customer and this can be done by many ways depending on the type of business so I can use truck filling or uh, tube trailers to fill the gas at these trailers and transport that to the customers and in many cases it is done when we are talking about gas station in Brazil we have some gas station that receives the biomethane and sells that for for filling in the cars that are able to 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 operate with natural gas but depending on the region and the purpose of the the use of the biogas or the biomethane we can do that by pipelines and when we are talking about trucks it that's not the best example here when we are talking about trucks is this uh, the trucks looks like this one 
because it's this truck is to transport gas and not to transport liquid so because of that we have this kind of tubes connected in a in a, in a header where we connect the hoses and we fill the the station where we need to deliver the product and of course that we 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 fill these tube trailers with more pressure as possible because as higher is pressure more mass of gas we can we can add to the tube trailers and another option of delivering the product is by pipeline so in this case we connect the outlet or the battery limits of our plant with uh, a pipeline and with that we can deliver the gas and of course that we need to have uh, a metering station and in many cases this metering station, station must comply with specific regulatory issues but that is uh, subject to another live session and with this we have we have uh, an overview of the biomethane uh, pro process but if you are considering to to when you are doing uh, documentation to share with regulations or to share with the the customer or something like that we will want share this kind of block flow to your third party so i have developed uh, a block flow diagram in order to have a more a more a more cleaner or uh, engineering documents that represent this biomethane production overview so we have the land field and the land field feeds us with biogas and the, the biogas must be uh, compressed so I have biogas blowers and I have pretreatment I need to do the cooling remove impurities and contaminants and ma in many cases it is HOS and after I do that I must compress to send to the sweetening purification unit where I have the CO2 removal and with that I produce the biomethane I need I must verify the quality and if it gets the quality required by the regulations in the contract I can do the distribution and the distribution is from it can be using gas pipeline to an uh, industrial area or can be used can be done by trucks as you have seen in the picture and with that we finally send or uh, the customer can use the biomethane as for his application and as we are talking about the engineering document i need to have uh, 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 some administrative information here like the revision date the, ver the executor ver the verifier the approval and etc and I have some useful links here eventually if you want to connect with me in LinkedIn we can go to jefferson-costa-process-engineer in LinkedIn and I, I accept everything everyone that asks for connections in LinkedIn but I also have a website so if you go to www.jeffersoncosta.com you will find all links to my all social media like Facebook, Instagram, uh, training programs, and also I have a blog with more information related to chemical process engineering plan design. And I invite you to join my Telegram channel in process because there I share a lot of my experience, experience as chemical process engineer in, in daily activities. So there I record audios regularly and I share with the members in order that you can get familiar with chemical process engineering plan design uh, having a mentor and that is my free mentoring to you and to finish this presentation
let me show you how it looks like uh, let me show you how it looks like a biomethane process in the Aspen High Seas. So here I have the the, bi the biogas going this way and I, I do the specification or I do the composition of the biogas in dry bases and with that I use an uh, operator to do the saturation of the biogas with water because when we are producing the biogas at the land field it is saturated with water at the temperature of the reaction of the ambient temperature and I need to transfer that to my to my process to my I need to transfer that to my process and I have a blower and here I added a pipeline because usually from the landfill to my process I can have many many meters or kilometers so with that I can evaluate what are the requirements or the inlet requirements to specify the blower and for instance in this case it is in kilopascal but here I have a negative pressure it's in absolute pressure and if I change the settings to barge you will see that we have negative pressure and in this case I have direct after cooler where I use a closed loop to, to decrease the temperature of this biogas and I have a shielding system or a cooling system so I use a plate heat exchanger and here I have the representation of my HOS removal I have seen some papers that shows how it is possible to simulate the bio bio the the bio removal of the hos in Aspen high seas eventually i will do a video about that and after that in this process i have another i have a wash tower to remove any kind of spirits that can go that can come from the biological system and I have my compressor and in this case you can see that I have a three stage of compression and because of that I have intercoolers I have vessel separators because when I increase pressure and I decrease temperature I can have I can condensate water present uh, at this this stream I have a polish in here where I can remove the remaining content of HOS from the, the gas and I have an integration with the, the CO2 removal unit and with that I can I increase the pressure of my bare gas I have a recirculation from the, the flash flash vessel as I told you to, to recover the methane that is absorbed during the absorption process so with this I, I can evaluate depending on the changes that I have in pressure, in temperature, in the, in the flow of my biogas what is the expectation that I can expect in my in my process and of course that many of these equipments I must size and it is the kind of thing that I share with my students in my training program my time is over it's already 10 a.m. and now I need to join my 
meeting of my director. So thanks a lot for being with me up to up to up to now. And if you want to have if you want to have this presentation, please le let me know in the comments if you want to, and I can I will evaluate if I will let this available in my Telegram channel in process. So to have this presentation is up to you. I hope you like it, and I'll see you soon in the next live session. Bye bye.